Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, we're going to look at the event macro. So in previous videos and in previous concepts we've, ex we've examined, interactions are generally clicking on links. We need to know if something happens, and so we see see result, or we adjust some statistics and then click something else. We don't always have to do that. We can start to think of our code as responsive to input as it happens. In other words, as an event happens, we can respond in some way. And the event macro allows us to set up a one time, and with the combination of other macros multiple times, based on conditions. So let's kind of see what I'm talking about here. So previously we needed something like this. We would set up some variable in some place, we might use cycling link or any other combinations of user input, we would bind to that corresponding variable, that way it was updated in cycling link and updated the variable, and then we needed to see, hey, show me link rerun, show result. Very, very common pattern. We saw it with multiple statistics examples in previous videos, and we've seen it across many, many different things within Harlow. Generally, we would update one thing with one set of macros and then see the result with another set of macros. So let's kind of just run through what this looks like and why we may want to do something different. So this is a very common setup. We might have something like this. It might also use the input or all kinds of other things. Then we would see result and the numbers too. Or see result might also do some type of calculation for us. We might be choosing statistics, adjusting any number of other things, and then seeing the result as part of a separate interaction. So two interactions, the first one getting the data, the second one seeing the result. We can shrink that to a single interaction using the event macro. The event macro works very similar to the if macro, so we're setting up some type of condition. When this thing is greater than, or was this thing equals this thing, or whatever kind of condition we're setting up. But we're setting it up in reference to time, when something happens. So, the exact same thing again, right? Set up some initial variable, set it to zero right here, and this is a passage variable right here or a temporary variable, so it, won't, it will only exist within this passage. Cycling link right here, zero, one, two, and three. Then I want to respond when something happens. When, notice this very specific keyword right here, notice it's a slightly different color, event. When, number is one, so right here, don't pick one. When, number is two, don't pick two. When, number is three, yes, pick three. This is gonna seem a little strange. We are responding to a single interaction instead of allowing the user or player two interactions. In the previous example, they set some data, again, using input, cycling link, however we're setting that up, then seeing the result as a separate interaction. Here, we're allowing Harlow to respond dynamically or responsively to whatever we're doing. Let's see this in action. So over here in example two, Okay, this is zero, and so I'm interested in when this happens. So at some point in the future, should it ever occur, when it happens, do something. So now it's zero, don't pick one. Notice it responded right here, don't pick one. If I click two, don't pick two. And notice it's putting the text right here. Yes, pick three, reset back to zero. And notice it doesn't show it a second time. So the event macro runs as a one-time event, one-time focus. When it happens, do this. We can, of course, tweak that a little bit, and I'll show in, a, in a, a future video how to change that slightly. But the event macro allows us to respond to a single event. Notice the name event, not events, plural, but a single event. And then when the condition happens, using the when keyword within Harlow, we can respond to that. This allows us to create even more dynamic things. So as we previously saw by working with append, prepend, and replace, as it corresponds to change your macros and very specifically for words, phrases, and named hooks, we can have an interaction that then changes existing content in a passage. Particularly, replace macro can be incredibly powerful for that, where as we click and change things as a user or player, things are replaced or appended or prepended to existing content, allowing us to allowing us to create that single interaction instead of two interactions. 
User changes something, we respond. User changes something, we respond. And we saw that with the replace macro. This is our first step towards even more responsive creation of user interface elements within Harlem. So as we're moving through this and thinking about when things happen, if it should ever happen, when it happens, do something as a single event. And again, we'll look at a pattern of how we can refresh this and keep responding to the same event over and over in the next video. But at least within this video, the event macro allows us to dynamically respond to things. When a particular value changes, do something. The do something, at least right now, is just to show text. But remember that we also have that existing knowledge from previous videos. And if you've not seen those previous videos, I recommend checking them out, especially on replace, to allow us to dynamically replace things as things happen, allowing us to keep updating based on the values that we're getting from different macros dealing with input and data. Incredibly important first step as we start to build more reactive interfaces, more reactive stories within Harlow 3.3, focusing now on the event macro, the conditions we're setting up, and when they happen to do something else. All within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.